Hello and welcome to Fashion Bites. I'm Ellen Byram, author of the Screwball Noir Crime of Fashion Mysteries, featuring Lacey Smithsonian, a fashion reporter in Washington, D.C., the city that fashion forgot. As you know, Lacey solves crimes with fashion clues, and we can use a few fashion clues when we examine other decades. Today we're going to check back into the 1940s ball, but first let's talk a little bit about the 1940s and why there should be a ball celebrating a time when the Second World War was threatening our way of life, a war in which millions and millions of people died. The 1940s Big Bash, held in Boulder, Colorado every June, is not held to glorify war, but to celebrate the American spirit, to persevere in the face of uncertainty, to acknowledge tough times that test our mettle, to honor the men and women who served in the armed forces, the greatest generation. As Thomas Paine wrote during the American Revolutionary War, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. So it is with the 1940s. And perhaps today as well, we are still meeting challenges. But Americans in the 1940s met challenges with gumption. When is the last time you heard that word? The reality, however, was that it wasn't a movie in the golden light of nostalgia. Although privations in other countries were more severe, Americans were urged to sacrifice. The advice of the day was use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. I'm eternally glad we can still find a few clothes from the 1940s, which are getting harder and harder to find. For this year's ball, I wore a copper-colored crepe dress with a long peplum overskirt and sequined embellishment on the right shoulder, as well as a saucy hat. In the 1940s dress I'm wearing right now, you also see embroidery on the right shoulder. There's matching decoration on the left hip. This was a common theme. And this is an example of the effect of L85 clothing regulations where designers were forced to be more creative with the limited amount of fabric they were allotted per garment. Americans learned to live without luxuries as the factories making those goods turned their production to new wartime uses. Car factories began manufacturing tanks and jeeps and Americans would not get completely new model cars until 1948. After the war, they were getting warmed over 42s with new trim and grills. Sewing machine manufacturers were told they were now making machine guns instead of sewing machines. Nylon and silk were designated for war uses such as parachutes and not ladies stockings. The only silk that could be purchased was strictly intended for wedding gowns. However, many brides chose to wear suits and spare the silk for the military. Goods were rationed and the Office of Price Administration put a price cap on such things as whiskey. It could sell from 69 cents to two dollars a gallon. Other rationed items included sugar, meat, leather shoes, and gasoline. What else was happening? During the 1940s, a first-class stamp was three cents. Rita Hayworth married Orson Welles, and a horse named Count Fleet took the Triple Crown. The movie Casablanca was released, giving Americans hope that with Humphrey Bogart on our side, we just couldn't lose. And there was music everywhere, as if it were the soundtrack to their lives. Americans were listening to big band music by Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, and Harry James. They swooned to Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby. And they weren't merely listening, they were dancing. People were swing dancing and fox trotting and jitterbugging and lindy hopping. They danced to bands whenever they got the chance. And when you couldn't use the car to get to a dance, you'd dance to records and to shows on the radio. You might have to dance with your family, your brother, your sister, but you danced because it helped you get rid of the feeling of anxiety about the war, if only for a few hours. It's part of the reason that I am beginning a new book about Lacey Smithsonian's Aunt Mimi, which is set during World War II. It starts at a community dance. Now, let's go to the ball and check out those dances and see how they are holding up today. 
It's a beautiful evening on the main dance floor of the ball set against the Flatiron Mountains. If you're looking for fashion clues, keep your eye on the man in the white zoot suit. This look, currently undergoing a resurgence of popularity, is linked to notorious crimes of fashion, the Zoot Suit Riots of 1943. The origin of the Zoot Suit is traced to the Harlem Renaissance of the 1930s when African American men wore them because they were big and loose and easy to wear while dancing. They were popularized by entertainers like Cab Calloway. The zoot suit trend spread to Los Angeles, and Latino men and other minorities wore them. Unfortunately, during the war, the zoot suit riots broke out in Los Angeles. Servicemen beat up on Latinos. The riots continued for days. They claimed the suits were unpatriotic because they used too much fabric. While that was one excuse, the riots were also tied to racism. But tonight, sailors, soldiers, and zoot suiters are all dancing together. The once divisive zoot suit is just another 40s style. Were we speaking about wearing comfortable dancing clothes? Here's another fashion clue. It looks like this woman, in the blue denim overalls, has just left her job at the factory welding airplane parts together, and she can't wait to show off her new dance moves. And don't forget, it's always nice to have a willing partner, like the guy in black, right here. The ball attracts a crowd of all ages, big and little, young and old, hot and cool, and people at all dancing levels. Hey, these guys look pretty good. During the war, your best guy might be flying overseas, and you have to go to the dance and might wind up dancing with your sister or your best friend. But it was a common sight at dances during the 40s. We were talking about dancing with your sister. Well, we saw a couple of families dancing together at this year's ball. A couple of sisters and mom and dad switching off partners and gosh it looks exciting. So we're thinking they're underneath the age of too cool for mom and dad. For you single people out there, the 1940s ball can be very romantic. Most years, some couples choose to become engaged at the ball, but this year, one couple went further and tied the knot and danced the night away in their beautiful evening attire. Some women can't resist a uniform, even if it's worn on your friendly neighborhood milkman. Here he is, with a fresh quart of milk and a great big smile. You can have your choice of dance floors at the ball, 
Across the field, inside Rick's Cafe, which has a wonderful Moroccan Casablanca theme, there's some excellent swing music and also more dancing. I don't ever like to do this song unless I want to remember the evening. During the 1940s, so Frank we'll Sinatra was a teeny bopper's this dream, and teens, known as tonight. Bobby Soxers, were apt to swoon as they swarmed his concerts. Oh, Frankie, oh, Frankie, oh, Frankie. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be an homage to the era without Mr. S, portrayed here by Derek Evelsizer, albeit a few years after the 40s, during the 50s and 60s Rat Pack era. When I'm up there, when the world is cold, I will feel close. Just think of you and the way you look tonight. It's your love with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft there is nothing for me but to love you just the way you look tonight damn that's gonna get at least 12 likes i hope you enjoyed our trip to the 1940s complete with soundtrack that's all I have for now. If you want to know more about me or my books, check out my website at ellenbyram.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. That way you won't miss any. And please, feel free to share. This isn't a secret society. Bye.